from the beginning, we've always, you know, had people reach out and it was always, can you work with this creative? Can you work with this song? Can you work with this? And throughout things like Born Dreamer, where you really get to develop your own from start to finish and make it yours and market it however you want. And really all of the specific details that go into each and every product that's made, you are the person that gets to say yes and no. I'm Tom Ward and over the last couple years, I've had the chance to sit down with some of the biggest celebrities and influencers in the world. What I've always found most fascinating is the stories of the businesses that they've built behind the scenes. On this show, you'll get an inside look of what it takes to build a successful business from some of the biggest celebrities, business people, and up and coming entrepreneurs in the world. This is The Tom Ward Show. Hey guys, welcome to Tom Ward Show, where every week we talk to the most successful people in the world and they teach us how to improve our lives. It's time to level up. We're here at the D'Amelio Footwear event with Heidi, Mark, and of course, Charlie D'Amelio. This is crazy. The last time I saw the three of you was at Dixie's record release party. It was a big night for the D'Amelios because you also had your Born Dreamer event that right across the street night, the yeah. same night. And it's wild. At the time, I kind of saw the vision of what you guys would end up being D'Amelio brands was, okay, I see it. You know, you've done your collaborations at a very high level. But it's like, okay, I think we'd be better off maybe doing it ourselves. When was the first time you realized, like, hey, maybe, you know, collabs aren't the way to go. Maybe we can do our own thing. I mean, from the beginning, we've always, you know, had people reach out. And it was always, can you work with this creative? Can you work with this song? Can you work with this? And throughout things like Born Dreamer, where you really get to develop your own from start to finish and make it yours and market it however you want and really all of the specific details that go into each and every product that's made you are the person that gets to say yes and no and it's been really nice with Tavilio footwear especially the fact that if we don't like this one little thing they can change it and we can make each thing that Tavilio footwear puts out the the thing that we love and the thing that we know other people will love because we've tested it, we've tried it, we've worn it for hours. We, Every single part of it is something that really matters to us. And I think it's just been awesome being able to do this with my entire family. You know, my dad has been such a help, even though he might not be wearing the shoes. Um, so it's been really great getting to work with everyone. And I think how well Dibilio Footwear has come together really shows, you know, the team that is working to make D'Amelio Footwear the best it can be, as well as the family and how we're able to work together to make something great for someone else. It's incredible. Congratulations on the launch. Talk about D'Amelio brand. So you did not mess around. Six million dollars in seed money from, you know, Michael Rubin and, you know, a who's who list of investors. Yeah. First of all, how do you pick you, I'm sure everybody wants to be in the D'Amelio business. I want to be in the business. Unfortunately, I don't have millions of dollars. Everybody's kind of lined up. I'm sure there's a lot of buzz around it. How do you decide who joins? You know, whose money do we want? Who who do we want to partner with? Yeah, I mean, w Michael Rubin and I have been friends for a few years now, and we want. I've always told my wife and my kids that they go into business with people you enjoy, and that's that's first and foremost. I was blessed when I moved out here. When we moved out here, we met Rich Rosenblatt, who uh, started MySpace. He's a founder in Autograph, and he was the one that helped me put a whole group of people together because um, we're new to L.A., so we didn't really know a lot of people. So, And now look at this. I mean, what's more this, L.A. Yeah. event than this, yeah. you know? I worked in the sports apparel industry when I started my career, and then I became entre entrepreneurial, and I started my own clothing brand. So the girls and Heidi have seen that entrepreneurial spirit. They've seen me designing things late at night and doing all aspects of business. So we're, we're the next thing I know I texted you today, we're getting involved in the in the food space, and we're going to launch a deal at a major retailer. Okay. Uh, that's going to be really exciting, and the name is... Uh, really hits home to our to to us, so it's it's going to be good. So we're excited about that. And then I don't want us to do traditional things. I mean, what I think why people were so excited, why we got into footwear as opposed to getting into makeup. Yeah, or, why shoes? Uh, why not? We, we it all kind of came together. And the woman that is actually uh, our head designer was coincidentally from our hometown. Her dad was a banker 
in in our hometown. And when I went to start my first, when I opened my first checking account with my clothing brand, he was uh, the head of the bank. And um, he wow. remembered when his daughter graduated college, she came into New York and met me and I didn't have anything for her then. And she ended up having a 20 year incredible uh, career in the footwear business. And when we started D'Amelio Brands, I asked her, uh, to come come over and she jumped at it and and but we would never be able to get this done without her and people who've been doing this a long time. Hey Charlie, this happened from idea to completion to here in less than a year, right? What was having the right team in place, you know, key in making that happen so quickly? Absolutely, I think you know, um, having an entire footwear line is not as simple as oh, let's just put together these <laughs> shoes. There's so much work that goes into it. And from each person on our team that has put so much time and energy and effort into each pair of shoes and every single thing, even this launch party, you know, it takes a lot of people to put something together that can be this amazing. And it it would really, you know, I I know I would be very lost if I didn't have everyone around me helping because, you know, I didn't, I wasn't in the footwear business prior to this, so it's nice to have those people that really know the ins and outs of it to be able to ask those questions that, you know, you wouldn't know without having people like them around. What was the inspiration? What brand, what shoe brands did you grow up loving and what do you love now? What was kind of the inspiration behind these? I think the inspiration really came from a lot of, these shoes were so cute, but, and there was always a but, whether it was, I got blisters or my toes were numb or I now can't walk for three days because they hurt so bad. And, you know, going to a lot of carpets and events, I'm in high heels quite a lot. So it's nice to be able to make shoes that, you know, are not only really, really beautiful to look at, but are also very, very comfortable and easy to walk in. Talk about the line. You have seven, seven different pieces. Is that yeah. what you call them? We have... We have um... Eight styles, eight styles I think okay. 28 skews. Okay. So every style and a color is considered a skew. Okay. So, um, and it's a real, you know, it's a real footwear brand. We did not use any, um, any, uh, we created, we, it's called taking out your own mold. So everything, we have a great partner out of New York, um, a couple partners that actually have great relationships with factories all over the world. And they've been our liaison between design um, but this is all ours. Every every product, every fabric, every even the graffiti pattern, which I, I keep bringing this up. I started one of my I started Mad Soul, which was my clothing brand in two thousand in two thousand. And my first hire was a, a graphic designer named Travis, who's a graffiti artist and an incredible artist. He did all of the graffiti patterns for the footwear. So twenty three years later, we came full circle, and so it's the whole line is really dear to us and, and our family. And I just want to add, it was, you know, obviously um, it's Dixie and Charlie and I and putting our sort of stamp on what the line looks like, but it's also, we're very different age groups. So it was, I just love the way that it sort of crosses over. And I think, I feel like there's something for everyone. And if it's not in the, this launch, it's coming. Uh, so I, I just... You know, I, I want people to, when they think of D'Amelio footwear, not to think of like, oh, it's a young kid's brand. Like, I'm not going to buy that. Like, there's women and friends and family that have been looking at the shoes and excited. And they're like, that's like, that's so me. Yeah. So I think that's going to be something that'll be interesting for our brand to sort of span the decades. <laughs> nice. I saw some, of course, Yukon people, right, you know, as part of this launch, which I now know more about Yukon sports than I ever really so wanted everybody. to know. I but thanks bad. to following you on Twitter, I know everything. But who else are you looking to partner with? Uh, creators, other athletes? You know, who do you see the, representing the brand beyond, you know, you and Dixie? Yeah, I mean, I would love... And Heidi. I would love for all of the brands that are going to be created under Tamilio Brands to speak to, you know, my fellow influencers as well as many other people that would look at something like D'Amelio Brands and D'Amelio Footwear and love it enough to want to be a part of it as well. Nice. Tom, what was really interesting is in, as Charlie and Dixie have access to all these influencers, Charlie called her hometown friends. They're for most here. Of, They're here right, right they now. Here, really? Yeah. You know, nice. Who, who were young women in college that, and I remember Charlie talking to them like, so 
what do you you know what do you feel Regular, about this real and people. what do you need and what yeah. are, and what are price points that you yeah how that... much would you be willing to spend on a boot yeah. like not some influencer making millions yeah, a year like a normal that, person yes. normal college kid and I had them ask their friends and their yeah. roommates and, and but at the that's time. Cool. Uh, her friends were still in high school, so we had, we kind of got that voice, like, what, what are, are you wearing, wearing to prom? prom? <laughs> Graduation. <laughs> and then Dixie's friends are all in college, yeah. so she was, those are different, you know, it's not a long time from yeah. high school to college, but it's a, it's different, so, you know, they had their opinion on it, so we all brought, they brought, you know, that knowledge, which was so valuable, all together, and that was part of, part of the deal, you know? Nice, we're almost out of time. Charlie, do you have any advice for young, aspiring entrepreneurs out there? What kind of businesses to look at, you know, where to make some money and, you know, this year and beyond? I would say making money is one thing, but to be able to be able to work in a field for a long period of time, do the things that interest you and go after things that you care about and you enjoy. That way it doesn't always feel like work. This doesn't feel like work. This doesn't feel like work. That's pretty fun, right? Yeah. Do you have any advice for the aspiring entrepreneurs out there, the young Mark Demilio's of the world? Yeah, same same thing. I think work on work on your personal brand and and grow that and do things that you you enjoy. That's what that's what I started doing as a, at, when I first started my first clothing brand. And and uh, I I think it's amazing for young people now because the barrier of entry and your access to the end consumer is way different when that when I was young. When I was young, you had to go to a buyer and go to a retailer and you had to do your own, you had to go to magazines to get marketed. Now you could, if you, if you have a really cool product and a cool idea, you can put it up on a social media platform and go direct to consumer. Yep. Finally, the final question is I got to know you guys over the last couple of years a little bit. What do you think when people call you the, the next generation of the Kardashians, right? The, this generation's Kardashians. Like I've heard that thrown around. What do you think when people say that? I mean, we take it as a compliment. I, I think, think, I think right? they've done a great job. I think we're a different family, but um, I think they've done a great job. And they've also handled the scrutiny, which we realize is, isn't easy all the time. So <laughs> kudos to them. Yeah, I mean, to be a family in right in the face of the public eye for so many years in so many different ways, doing so many things. Consistently. Yeah, I mean, it's so incredible to watch them and you know also be able to look at how far they've come and everything that they've been through as a family and especially with so many people always talking about them because they are so so big as you know people and entrepreneurs and they all have their own businesses it's something that I think helps because you know sometimes you wonder if is the hate too much but it's nice to know that there's people that have been through it and been through it worse at times and it's just really nice and they're such an incredible family that it's not only such a compliment but it's also something to look forward to nice well thank you so much for sitting down with me it's a pleasure seeing every, everybody all of you i wish you continued success i hope the party turns out great i hope the launch turns out great i'm wish you know i can't wait to see where you guys are at in five years and thank you so much for watching guys make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications new interviews every tuesday and listen to the audio podcast when you're running around or available on all podcast platforms thanks guys